as Irk Russell used to say, had them the whole way. <laughs> What a win, uh, what a game. First of all, just credit to uh, to the Navy team and how hard they fought. It, it was, it, that was two football teams that fought just as hard as they possibly could. And I've said this to many people when they ask me what's different about this game. The difference is the players. It's, it's there, there's places that have great crowds like we, I mean, I looked around and every seat was full in that place. It was awesome. What a great crowd. And there's stadiums like that every Saturday afternoon around the country. What's different in this game is the players. Every one of those players and every one of those young people that were sitting up in the stands that are their, that are their classmates have made a, a pledge to serve this nation and to perhaps pay the ultimate price for all the rest of us who haven't made that pledge. And that's what makes this game different. And it, it, it makes the way they play this game different. They are fighting as hard as they can on every snap. And that's both sides. Both tough kids, tough people uh, that care so much about who they represent. Uh, and it feels like every single play that the game is hanging in the balance. That's the intensity of this game and it was fought that way from start to finish I still don't know how we won um, but we, our guys just found a way they just they just found a way and uh, but credit to the other team because they fought and battled they gave themselves a chance to win and, and uh, we we're just fortunate that the ball bounced our way a couple of times when we needed to but uh, I'm really proud of our team proud of our senior class this wasn't a great season for us uh, we've, we've become accustomed to, have, to winning a lot of football games and playing in the postseason, and we've won some Commander Chiefs trophies here, which is a great source of pride for our, for our program and our, and our academy. Uh, but, but this team never stopped fighting. They never stopped believing. And it's a credit to the senior class. Uh, two great captains and a great bunch of seniors, and they, they kept playing. And uh, just somehow, some way, we found a way to get it done tonight, and I'm, I'm incredibly proud of our team and just uh, respectful of this game and this rivalry and the other team and how hard they fought. And so um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was an epic battle. It's one that uh, I'll remember for, for a long time, probably forever, just uh, how we, we managed to win this game. So um, I guess with that, I'll let you fire away. Coach, just take us through the overtime. You get a touchdown on the first play from Markel Johnson, the Navy answers, and then they put the pressure on, get to the goal line, you stop the third, third and three, uh, get the fumble, and then you set up for Quinn's kick, which he made and uh, talked about. So um, we, we ran the power play to the left, and, uh, and it blocked, the, the guys blocked that play really, really well, as well as we probably ever blocked it. And Markel is, He's, he's not been the, the regular starter, hasn't played a whole lot this year, but uh, he's really just got a knack for, for running the football from, from uh, that gun stuff and the, the, zone, the zone plays and the, and the power plays and the gun. And, and so we've given him a chance to do that some this year, and, and he's had some good runs. And that was, that was really a great run, ran through, through there and, and uh, was able to get it into the end zone. And our guys were obviously very excited. And... Uh, it's hard going first in overtime because you, you 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 want you want the other team to go first so you know just exactly what you need to do on that possession. So to score a touchdown uh, in the in the opening possession was really important and key. And then maybe um, I mean they just they came out there and battled. They they got themselves in a in a third down situation, made a really good run, got a first down, uh, made another couple of good runs and got it down there inside the five yard line. And and that play on the goal line, I, I, I couldn't see it on the replay. I mean, I couldn't see the ball and, and how it came out, but, but just somehow the ball got loose and we hit that thing like we needed to. And, and somebody was there, Johnny on the spot to get it. And, and then, uh, and we, I, 
I, I said to the offensive staff on the headset, I said, let's score a touchdown. Let's not let's not put this on the kicker. Let's go score a touchdown. And as it was, you know, Navy, who's got a really good defense and did a great job defending us tonight, um, stopped us. And, and, uh, and I said on second down, I said, if we get in a third and long situation, let's get the ball in the middle of the field. So we ran really the same play to the right on second down. We didn't pop it out of there, so we ran the same play going to the left. And we sent word in to, to Cade, who did a really good job and centered the ball for us. And Quinn, Marex, Quinn Marex, Maretsky went out there and, uh, and nailed the field goal. And, and you know, that, was, that, was, that was a clutch field goal he made in regulation to tie it up. It's a huge field goal. Um, so that's a guy that just a few weeks ago at Troy, had a had a walk off field goal opportunity uh, and uh, and and missed it and so you know he just he didn't let that affect his his uh, his kicking tonight and he, I'm, I'm, let me tell you that's a big kick you go out there in the Army Navy game there's I don't know how many million, million people watching and and uh, and nail that field goal to tie it up and then do that in overtime it's that's a that's a clutch play. Coach, just maybe ask, uh, tell us a little bit about the defense. It grew so over the season, played very well the last couple of games. You Leo Lowen at 16 tackles today, uh, and then you have a goal line stand uh, in the overtime. The defense really uh, improved over the season. They did. Um, we've really just, I think, been playing solid defense for, I don't know, probably since the month of, month of November, maybe even a little earlier than that, into that stretch there. And we started out, we had a tough start, one and four. That's a terrible way to start a season. Uh, and we, we won a couple of, in a row there in the middle. And then we lost two really close games. And the defense played well, continued to play well, and, and they have they have improved. And, uh, we tackled better, we didn't do that very well. You, you, you heard me agonizing about our uh, just our missed tackles early in the year. We missed some tonight, but, uh, but they have played better. And, uh, and we, we, we did a really good job stopping them at times and, and, uh, and other times, you know, they made some plays on us. They, they had the, uh, and they were on the power read where they, they jet sweeped that guy across and they were handing it off some and, and they were getting the edge on us and getting some good yards there. They hit that trap for 77 yards and we didn't spill the trap and uh, they blocked it up and knocked the guy out of there and, and creased us and, you know, those were, those were plays that, you know, that big play could have cost us, but you know, our, I think our defense has played tough and played well. And Nate Woody's an excellent defense coordinator, so they, they have improved. Coach, just on offense, just decided to start Kate Ballard uh, today. It seemed like you, you didn't have the running, the fullbacks available. Jacoby didn't, Buchanan didn't play, Tice Riley only a couple of plays. It seemed like you really had to change your offense today. Well, if you look at the last three seasons, and this one's not going to be a whole lot different. We had, uh, I don't know what the math is, 48, uh, 48 rushes for 125 yards. So what, what is that? Two points. Two points something? Two points. Yeah. It's been our average now for the last four years. We're averaging just over two yards a, a rush against them. They got a really good run defense. They got a really good defense coordinator. The kids play really hard. And so we felt like we needed to change up things a little bit. We ran a lot of shotgun stuff. Um, and uh, and so Kate, we felt like doing that was going to give us the best chance. He's uh, he's a good football player, and and uh, we had a plan to throw the ball some, and we tried. We we, we weren't real successful there either. Um, but uh, I'm, when, you, when you when you average over three years, and you're looking at it, you say we average two point two yards carry going into this game, we're like, okay, let's try something different because that that's not working. But Ended up right there with our average, but good thing we got enough points to win. Right, yeah. Coach, um, you had a moment where Mark, Mark went wrong after the game where you climbed up to the ledge and had, had some time with him. Can you talk about that a little bit and what you meant to the team and your relationship with him? Because it seemed like it was pretty special. You know, Mark Quellbrock is a really special kid. Uh, he means a lot to this team, to this academy. He means a lot to me. Uh, just. I don't know that I've ever been around a, a young man on a football team that's been more dynamic as a leader than him. And uh, to, to go through a senior season like he did, um, 
have the disappointment that we had. Uh, to be able to sit up there on that wall and see his teammates and classmates celebrating together and to see the school board in our favor in the biggest game of his career, in the fight of our lives. I mean, just, just to savor that moment, it's pretty special. And, uh, you know, I just jumped up there to, to kind of savor it with him and, uh, and just tell him how much I love him. Because I do, I love that kid. He's a special, special young man. And uh, the soldiers that he serves in the Army, they're, they're very fortunate to be, be able to get him and, and uh, to have that guy lead them. They're, they're, they're going to love that guy. But, uh, Coach, congrats. Um, you talked all season about the turnover battles, winning that. Today you won. You're going to be one nothing, but of course you had to block Dalton for a touchdown. Can you talk about that today? Last year in 2021, all FBS football games were won. Uh, I should say, when one of those teams won the turnover battle, it wasn't tied, but somebody had one more turnover than their opponent. 78% of those games were won by the team that had at least one more turnover than their opponent. So the turnover battle is the most important statistic in football. So obviously that made a huge difference for us today. Um, the fumble down there in the goal line, but the block punt, I mean that, Sean Saturnio deserves credit for that. He's our, our special teams coordinator. He comes up with a plan every week to be able to, to free a guy up. And, and we blocked a couple of punts this year. Uh, we had two punts this year that we just flat missed. We had guys right in front of it, uh, the ULM game and then to the, the Air Force game. And we had got, and, and he just does a tremendous job of coaching those teams. And so that was a huge play in the game, obviously. Was, uh, was uh, Noah subbing for Jimmy on that play, or was Noah in the whole time on that play? He was. That's, that's, Sal, I'll tell you what, man, I give you credit. I don't give you credit all the time, but I give you credit <laughs> for that. Jimmy got hurt on defense, and he just, he wasn't, he just couldn't go full speed. And so on third down, I asked him, I said, do you need somebody to go for you? And he came out and sent Noah in. And, and Noah, Noah, Noah's a, Noah Short's a really fast player. Uh, and he just timed it up. He had been in there earlier on another block for Jimmy. Um, but he just timed it up perfect, and he came scot-free. And, and Jabril Williams from my hometown uh, was able to... <laughs> How does he stay in bounds for that? Well, we got to work on, on fumble recovery. <laughs> um, but he was so excited. He just, I mean, he just managed to stay up. And thank God he stayed in. We don't win the game if he doesn't. Hey, Coach, Chris Heidel from Hartford Radio Baltimore. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Do you wish you could have an extra game to play? You know, I know you're in 66. Yes. Three. Do you wish you could go to a bowl game? Yes. I always want to go to a bowl game. Yeah. That's a, to me, bowl games are a great reward <laughs> for guys that play football at this level. And bowl games are special. I don't care what bowl game it is. They're, they're special. They're fun. And I'm disappointed that we're not able, not able to go. But we didn't earn it. We didn't earn it. If we won one more football game this year, we would go. And we had chances. And and the other team made enough plays to beat us. We didn't make the plays we needed to. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed, but uh, hopefully maybe that'll be motivation for the guys that are on this team to come back and try to earn one next year. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to win a football game. It's hard to win a college football game. Uh, and it's really hard to win one in Army. I can tell you that. And so... I'm, I'm proud of our guys for finishing the way we finished. We started out one and four, and we're six and six. So, you know, our guys, our guys found a way to battle and finish the season. And, and uh, you know, though it, it it wasn't from a win loss standpoint or victory standpoint uh, as successful as we wanted it to be. And uh, you know, there's another trophy that is out in Colorado right now. We sure would like to find a way to win that, but. And through all that, our guys just kept fighting, kept battling, including tonight. Pleasure.
hey, Coach Monk, in the goal line stand, um, you know, the last couple of games against UConn and UMass, your defense stepped up big on goal line stands over and over again. So when Navy gets down there in overtime, I know Leo said he didn't have any doubt in his mind you guys were going to come up with a stop. Um, was that pretty much the feeling on the whole sideline, the coaching staff? How did you feel at that point? I, 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 I had a knot in my stomach, like I was going to throw up when they're down there on the two-yard line. I mean, that's – it, that's agonizing to see that um, because it, it's hard for them not to score down there. I mean, they're, they're knocking on the door and your back to the wall. It's a hard stop. But our guys have done it before and so giving them some confidence. And it just, it's just the will. It's just the, the will that, that their team and our team just fighting like crazy. And, you know, their kids fighting to get into the end zone with that ball. And our kids are fighting to keep him out of the end zone. And so I'm glad Leo had said there was no doubt. Uh, but I just think we, we, we made a play. We made a play when we needed to. And, uh, and that was the bottom line. I mean, it's, it's that close to being a touchdown for them. And fortunately, it went our way. Okay, Coach, uh, Matt Truck and I with uh, Herb FM Sports Radio. So what does this mean to send the seniors out with a victory? That is a, it's a great way to finish. It's a great way for our seniors to, to end their careers and the pride that they'll take with them. This, this game lasts a lifetime for the seniors. Our senior class last year lost this game, went, went to a bowl game and beat Missouri, an SEC team, which is a big win in Army. This game last year will live with those seniors for the rest of their life, and 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 not in a good way. They're, they're gonna there's remorse and they're gonna be mad and disappointed and and that, that's what this game is. So for these seniors to be able to 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 celebrate a victory and have that for the rest of their lives is awesome, and uh, and I'm I'm glad for them. I'm glad that they were able to. To finish their careers two and two against Navy, and uh, you know it was uh, obviously uh, a tough loss last year, and, and uh, they'll come back this year. Today. And if I may follow up with just one more question, um, so just to talk about what does this first ever overtime game in this series between Army and Navy mean to the players, to the coaches, to the staff, to everybody? I didn't know that it was the first overtime game until after the game that when, when it was announced or somebody <coughs> said, uh, I guess one of the reporters was, uh, was interviewing me after the game on the field said something about it. I didn't know it was doing the, the first overtime game, which is hard to believe that uh, in the modern era since overtime started that one of these hasn't gone in. But they are always so close. I mean, just look at these games. I've been here nine years and seven of them have been one score or less. They're just battles. Uh, so I guess it was only fitting that uh, the way these two teams battled tonight, it went to overtime. And like I said, I, we were lucky. We were lucky to get that thing to overtime. So I, I was looking down here, we got 125 yards rushing. So we didn't have 100 yards in regulation rushing. And, and we won the football game. That's hard to believe. Because that, the statistic I said about, about turnovers, the number two, most common statistic, the team that rushes for one more yard than their opponent won 75% of the college football games last year. We weren't close, but we found a way. A couple more in the back there. Yeah, Coach, at halftime, you guys have a lead on the scoreboard, but the stat sheet wasn't very friendly for you. It, although after halftime, it looked like you started to make your own luck. Did you say something special to the team in the locker room at halftime? No, I just... You know, that talk is cheap. The talk doesn't do it. It's, it's, it's execution. I don't think either team had 100 yards in the first half. I could be wrong about that. You guys can, can back me on that. We didn't have 100 yards. Wasn't close. I don't, I don't think they had 100 yards. I'm not sure. So both defenses were playing pretty good. Um, and we had the blocked punt, which that, I, I said that at halftime when one of the reporters talked to me, uh, CBS uh, grabbed me right there as we were going into the tunnel. I said, you know, this, if our offense doesn't do something in the second half, we're going to have a tough time winning this football game. And 
as it turns out, we didn't do a whole lot on, in the second half on offense. Just, just, just enough. Um, but you know, guys made plays. Guys played, made plays when they needed to. And, and I, I, I just can't say enough for the, about the fight in this team and our players. Um, they, they never waver. I mean, I, I look and I see those their eyes on the sideline, and I can, I can see their body language, and they just never stop believing. We kept fighting, and that's awesome about this game. It's awesome about this team, and for this senior class, you know, every one of those guys is. We got one guy graduating this coming Friday, Tyler Tyler. The rest of those guys are going to graduate in May. They're going to take command of soldiers, and they have to lead soldiers. And they will be in much tougher fights with stakes much higher than they were in tonight. And to, to be able to, to have that grit and that toughness and that belief as leaders, soldiers are going to follow them, and they're going to follow that lead. And yeah, that's, 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 that's what was on display tonight. And it wasn't just on our sideline. The, the other team was fighting that way too. That's what's great about this game and about these teams. And you know, we want to win this game. We want to beat their pants off. I want to beat them every time we play. But I respect the fight that, that the competitors have in this game. Their guys, our guys. Um, and it, it, it's what makes our military the best fighting force this world has ever known because of people like that lead soldiers. We're going to do one more. Right down. Coach, after the game, I saw uh, uh, Superintendent introduce Quinn Moretzky to General McGonville, the uh, Chief of Staff of the Army. And then later, I saw uh, General Mark Milley going into your locker rooms. What does it mean when your players are recognized by the senior leadership in the military? Pretty incredible. And, uh, so for a guy that doesn't wear the uniform, um, it, that, that, that's really a, that's a neat experience for me. For our guys, they wear the uniform. So those are the highest ranking officers in the United States Army, and they're being personally recognized by them. That, that's, that's, that's an incredible experience for those guys. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, that they all come, that they're all here. We had the Secretary of the Army, the Army Chief of Staff, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, all in our locker room. It's pretty powerful. Um, it's a game like no other. And uh, you know, it's great to win. It's really hard to lose. We've been on both sides of it. And uh, I'm just so glad that, our, that we're on the winning side tonight. I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of our team. I love our team. And, and uh, just so glad they found a way to win tonight. Thanks, everyone. Be Navy. Football coach Jeff Martin will have more later. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be out there and I'll find out.